There's an assumption in society that learning is the acquisition of knowledge. This is a complete myth. According to learning scientists, learning is becoming. And at the same time, learning is the construction of knowledge. The design thinking for engaged learning model facilitates both of these aspects of learning. Through the process, you become, that is, you become increasingly expert in developing innovative solutions to messy real-world problems. You also construct meaning as you construct things at all phases of the process, from the framing of the problem statement to the construction of the final prototype. Design thinking for engaged learning is a model developed to serve as a structuring device for collaborative project-based learning. This project was actually super meaningful to me. I really enjoyed the whole process. It opened up a whole other realm of thinking for me and it allowed me to use skills that I hadn't used before and I think that I will be using some of the processes I learned for future problem solving. This model integrates the design thinking process with designerly ways of knowing. Designerly ways of knowing are the cognitive tools used by expert designers. Design thinking is a problem solving process that emphasizes perspective taking, innovative solutions, and iterative development. The design thinking process involves five phases, name and frame, diverge and converge, prepare and share, analyze and revise, and deploy. These phases are broken down into 10 steps. The designerly ways of knowing emphasized in the detail model are cognitive strategies used by expert designers, such as wicked problem framing, abductive reasoning, and reflection in action. The development of these strategies are integrated into particular stages of the design thinking process. The design thinking process typically starts by having students form groups and identify a real world problem that they could address through a design thinking process. My piece of advice is to find times to regularly meet with your group. This is really important because your group needs to be on the same page at all times and my group in particular found that it was much easier if we found a time that everybody was available to Zoom. Some background research is then conducted to truly understand the problem and the types of solutions attempted by others in the past. Groups then gather information about the problem through human-centered design methods, such as interviews and observations. This is followed by a period of framing the problem as a wicked problem. A wicked problem is one for which it is impossible to create a perfect solution. There are many possible solutions, but whatever the solution is that you decide to implement, that solution will create new problems. Um, and phase one is name and frame, and that is where you have your general topic, like food waste, and then you have to narrow it down to something specific, like food waste management at Texas A&M. We were able to kind of reframe our problem statement and um, kind of identify that we wanted to just focus on giving children access to Texas, Texas 4-H in rural areas. Um, and urban yeah, and urban areas. So we still hadn't like really identified which one. It was a, it was still pretty vague, um, and then we were able to kind of come to a consensus to just focusing on rural areas. The designerly ways of knowing most evident in this phase are wicked problem framing and reframing, contextualized thinking, and cognitive, affective, and cognitive empathy. In the next phase, they brainstorm to come up with as many possible solution ideas as they can. And then phase two was diverge and converge. Divergent thinking, um, Basically, what it looks like in the context of this project is taking your narrowed down problem and coming up with a bunch of different solutions for it. They individually write or draw each idea on a sticky note and place them on a wall. Creative, unusual, or impossible solution ideas are encouraged, and many solution ideas are needed. 
usually at least 20 produced by each person in the group. My first piece of advice is don't be afraid to be creative and with no bounds. This project encourages creativity so much. And one of the first things you'll be doing once you're put into groups is it's you'll be starting a brainstorming process. So you'll be using a virtual bulletin board and each team member has to come up with 20 ideas for the your prototype. And 20 ideas seemed so impossible. It seemed so difficult, but in this step, creative, out of the box, impossible ideas are welcome and encouraged. So this is your time to be confident. You have something to bring to the table. Literally anything that comes to your mind. Once there are a large number of ideas on the wall, they silently rearrange the ideas until clusters form. The group discusses each of the clusters and perhaps gives names to different clusters. And then convergent thinking is the opposite of divergent thinking. You take all the solutions you came up with and you narrow it down to one. And so that's what my group did. We picked composting um, and making composting bins around campus. And so that was what we did. And we found this out through our interviews and through the processes of us coming up with our thinking process on the sticky notes, we all noticed that we all came together, had to do something with money. After discussing the clusters, the group selects the one to which they are drawn, refining and synthesizing ideas in the cluster until it's possible to craft a potential solution statement. It's important at the end of this phase that there is only one solution and the team will work on that solution and only that solution throughout the remainder of the design thinking process. Yeah, and then from the concept map or ideation, um, we kind of saw a common trend of like all of our sticky notes in the biggest cluster for money and for fundraising and donations, things like that. So that's kind of where our high fidelity prototype came from is just kind of honing in on the fact that we need to focus on fundraising and finances, budgets, things like that. The designerly ways of knowing prominent in this phase are divergent and convergent thinking and epistemic and relevance exploration. After some project planning, individuals in the group each create a low fidelity prototype to share with others in their group. Before working on the high fidelity prototype, individual group members interview experts and real world stakeholders. The solution idea is described to the interviewees who are then asked to give feedback. After the group has seen all of the low fidelity prototypes created by the group members, they integrate the best ideas from all the low fidelity prototypes to create one high fidelity prototype. The group works together to construct this high fidelity prototype. It's important that individuals in the group do not take on different aspects of the work. Everyone in the group needs to work together. Right, and then after that we kind of went into creating our actual prototype, which is the gala. So we created an annual event with live music, dinner, beverages, a speaker, and um, a silent auction in order to raise money through selling tickets and through said auction. Once a working high fidelity prototype is developed, the group then does real world user testing with real world users in a real world context to collect data about the user experience. Ideally, this involves implementing the prototype at a small scale with a few real world users, but it often involves showing the complete high fidelity prototype to real world stakeholders and ask them how they feel about various aspects of the design and how they would experience the design once it's completed. Because designers tackle wicked problems, the problem cannot be described fully until a solution is taking shape. But the solution idea cannot be formed without having a problem statement. Working in this tension between the ever-evolving problem and the ever-evolving solution is known as abductive reasoning. And then Jordan created a fantastic flyer to kind of show how we've advertised the event, um, as well as through social media and word of mouth um, through other 4-H contacts that we have in Austin. Yes. Um, and then so after we kind of decided that was going to be our high fidelity prototype, 
did the flyer, things like that, and getting all the details. The designerly ways of knowing used most often in this phase are abductive reasoning, rapidly changing goals and constraints, working from abstract to concrete, and constructing and co-constructing meanings. In the next phase, the data from real-world stakeholders is analyzed. The findings are translated into a list of design moves, which are then used to modify the prototype through multiple iterations. The list of design moves should be complete before any work is done to improve the prototype. This is when we went back to interviews. So this is our second round of interviews and we each completed those um, within the week. They were assigned and were able to talk to real world stakeholders that were able to give like their opinion on um, how they thought this would deploy and things like that. So out of the four phases, this is probably my favorite phase because now we're getting into the details and showing how we're going to actually impact the Texas 4-H youth kids. In this phase, the designerly ways of knowing we see most clearly are reflection in action, contextualized thinking, constructing and co-constructing meanings, and cognitive, affective, and cognitive empathy. In the final phase, the design is deployed in a real-world context and the team engages in wrap-up discussions and other reflective activities. Hopefully, you'll be deploying your design in a real-world context in which you will have real-world impact. And we ended up actually making the sticker, and I've sold like 15 of them. It's, it's a different process than what we thought we were getting ourselves into at first. At first, you know, we didn't really know what we were doing, and then you got down into it, and now we know that we are actually going to actually be having an impact on Texas 4-H kids and it's a huge impact towards us. The design thinking for engaged learning process is collaborative. Almost all of the work is done by the team together, not by individual members taking on particular aspects, working alone on those aspects and bringing it back to the group. Working together is crucial. My first piece of advice is to meet with your team every week if you can. Um, I really enjoyed this project because I learned a lot about myself and how to trust others and depend upon other people's judgment sometimes because sometimes we're wrong, you know, and we forget things. And um, I really enjoyed working with my team. I never met anyone in person, but they're all really cool. We ended up scheduling our um, classes together next semester, so that was really fun. The most challenging thing about this project for me, and maybe for you, was um, making time to set aside working with others and making time to do the research and learn like what we need to do. And that, that can be challenging. You know you have to, you need to make a schedule, and then you have to have your team make a schedule. And so you'll have to work together in this project get the most out of the design team project. It will be important to read the instructions carefully each week and always check the due dates early in the week. With these, these are also very straightforward. There's always very detailed instructions and they always provide a rubric. So the most important thing is to read every single portion of the instruction. Uh, my best advice on those is always check before the due date because some of the things need to be done earlier in the week or you are not going to have time. I'm speaking from experience from forgetting to check it. The design thinking for engaged learning model can help learners develop 21st century skills such as collaboration, communication, creative problem solving, and critical thinking. The group project that we did throughout the semester was a great opportunity to develop uh, critical thinking skills and to attempt to address an environmental problem. Uh, we got to work with the team, which I believe added another layer of helpfulness. Doing that really helped me to ground myself in reality and realize how far we had come as a team and what we needed to do to uh, improve throughout the rest of the semester.